the only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. Don't play with demons. There are some subject matters that would have caused serious controversies in the body of Christ today except that they were spoken of directly by our Lord Jesus Christ. One of those subject matters is that of demons and demonology. Modern Christianity loves to live in the idea as if demons don't exist. But Jesus plainly told us they do. Jesus did not shy away from it. He didn't hide away from it. He tackled the subject head on. To begin this sermon, I want to start by saying to you clearly, don't play with demons. Don't interact with demons. Don't play demonically inspired games or board games. Demons are not something that should be played with or taken lightly. There is a real spirit world out there that can literally affect the world we live in. Allow this to be a word of warning. Don't play with demons. Don't flirt with them. I know the world. And the media may romanticize witchcraft and wizardry and spell books, Ouija boards, incantations and occult involvement. But the Bible warns us against these things. There are children TV shows that get children as young as five years to chant spells. Just imagine that. The devil has no morals or integrity. He has no remorse. Neither does he have empathy. He will do anything he can to enter your life. Anything to do with the dark world is something you should not open the door to your life to. To me it is appearing as if society is going back to the days where demons are seen as a good thing. In ancient Greece, the word daimon derived from the Greek verb diastai, meaning to divide or to distribute, had decidedly positive overtones. Demons in ancient Greece were considered divine, possessors of supernatural powers, fates, guardian spirits, or angels who give guidance and protection, which scarcely are depicted in ancient Greek art or mythology as their presence was felt rather than seen. To have a demon back then, or a demon helping you, was seen as a good thing in the past. And with the way the TV and TV shows glorify this now, it appears as if we are traveling back to this direction. For the record, there are no such things as good demons as some people claim and believe. No demon is good. Demons don't repent. They do not show mercy. All they seek after is to harm humans because we are created in the very image and likeness of God. So the devil and his demons are here on earth just to wage war against those that associate with Jesus Christ. Don't play with demons because the end result will be regretful. Jesus told us the mission of the devil and his agents in John 10 verse 10. He likened them to a thief whose mission is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Demons don't have any better intention than these descriptions. Frankly speaking, they can do you good to accomplish their mission to steal, kill, and destroy if that is the way they can successfully attack a person. Fundamentally, you need to understand you live in a world that is full of spirits. Do you know there is an instance where a demon-possessed man came to church in the Bible? Mark 1 verse 22 and 23 And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority, and not as the scribes. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, in the ministry of Jesus, we see that a demon could be in a church. A man with an unclean spirit was in the synagogue as Jesus taught the people, and the unclean spirit cried out through him. That we are gathered in church does not mean that a demon-possessed person cannot also stay around. Even as Jesus can live in us, so one uninhabited by Jesus can be inhabited by a demon if the invitation is extended either consciously or unconsciously. Exposure to things of the demonic world 
a person can open themselves up to the dark world, knowing that demons are real. Now let's talk about what you can do in the fight against them. Firstly, put on the whole armor of God. Ephesians 6 verse 10 to 18. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Secondly, take your position in Christ. Jesus gave a parable of two people who built a house. One built on the sand, the other built on the rock. When the rain came down, the house on the sand collapsed, while the house on the rock stood. What is this rock that we should stand on so that we will not fall when the devil attacks? Psalm 18 verse 2, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler, and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. Jesus is your rock. He is your salvation. When you are in Jesus, no attack that will come from the devil will succeed in your life. Indeed, the fact that you are a Christian doesn't exempt you from the devil's attack, but Christ is your shield. He will keep you safe. Being firmly grounded in Jesus and his word, will cause you to be unmovable in Christ. The devil cannot drive you away from Christ once you take a firm position. The fact that you are in Christ, you are a child of God. John 1 verse 12, But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Don't see yourself as a castaway. Don't see yourself as what people say you are. See yourself as how God describes you. And God says you are his child. Thirdly, trust in the Lord. If you want to have a successful fight, what you must do is trust in the Lord at all times. He knows where to direct you. He knows the things you need to do to win. He has the master plan for you. What you just have to do is trust him and do all he is asking you to do. Proverbs 3 verse 5 and 6 Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. The Bible says if we trust the Lord and lean on him only, he will direct our paths. You can't fight this battle alone. Your strength cannot carry you. If you depend on your strength alone, you will lose. Are you trusting in the Lord to fight your battles for you? Or are you okay trying to fight alone? Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved? if you're not willing to repent. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.